Hello and welcome back to ALC at Home. What a joy and honor it is to be back online with you here. Wherever you're watching from, welcome. This is ALC's online service. Um, here, we like to be able to um, spread hope and give hope, not to just our community, but beyond that as well. So that is our hope and our prayer for our online services. Um, I know we've been a little bit missing for the past week or so over Easter, um, and that is because we've done services a little bit differently here. For the first time, we had a good Friday service and that was amazing it was such a good time to just come and reflect on what um, Jesus did for us on the cross and then our Easter Sunday was different as well instead of a sermon we had um, a, an amazing time of worship throughout the service and we also had um, members of our congregation here in person share testimonies about what Easter means to them personally um, so I hope you've had a blessed um, Easter and a long weekend if you're in New Zealand um, or Easter break wherever uh, you are watching from but we are back back into our series on, series on 1 Peter uh, today we will have Lewis bringing the word to us so that's why you can see he's not with me here but I'm so excited to see um, the message that he is going to bring and so I hope you are as well uh, but before that just a few notices um, that we can get through and then I'll hand over to Lewis so first of all if you're watching for the first time then welcome why don't you leave a comment below on where you're watching from uh, it'll be awesome to connect with you and welcome you into our online family here at ALC we do see all of you as our own family and we love to connect with you so a different way that you can actually connect with us is through uh, Slido. Slido is a platform that we use here at ALC to ask questions. There can be questions to do with the sermon that you watched today or previous sermons, um, or it can be anything to do with faith or just life questions that you have. Uh, and then we upload those videos onto our YouTube channel. Pastor Hamish answers all of your questions. I think it's an amazing time where we can just come together and, um, you know, figure this whole faith journey, life journey out together. Chances are someone else has a similar question that's on your mind as well. So don't be afraid in asking um, any questions. And we upload videos every Wednesday and every Sunday uh, at 7.30 p.m. New Zealand time. But they are permanently on our YouTube channel for you to watch. Um, and if you've stumbled across this video somewhere else and you're wondering, how do I find out more about ALC? I want to know more. Uh, I want to watch more videos or I want to just know more. The best way to do that is through going to our Linktree link. Uh, as you can see, the the URL is on our screen. Um, and this is the best place where you can find our websites, our social media, sermon notes, uh, other YouTube videos that you'd like to see, all are on that link. So we really encourage you um, to click that link and to you know find out more about ALC. And another way is also you can always email info at alc.org.nz and someone from our team will be in touch with you for sure. Another way is uh, we really want uh, you to feel like you're supported um, you, and you have guidance through this faith journey that you're going through. Uh, we as family like to be there for each other during the uh, highs and during the lows. Uh, so if there's any way we can be praying for you here at ALC, please don't hesitate to email prayer at ALC. Dot org, dot NZ, and someone from our prayer team will keep in touch with you, uh, you know, and pray for you and they'll walk alongside you during this journey. But before we head into the word, we are going to have a time of Bible reading. This is a time where we can come together as a church and um, do our own sort of worship through online um, and reflect upon uh, God's truth and his promises for us. So I really encourage you that as the scripture is being read, Father, we just thank you for all that you are, God. We thank you that you are with us, you are for us. God, we pray in this time expectantly for all that you are doing, all that you are, that you are in control above all things. And Father, we thank you as a daily reminder of the hope you've given us through Jesus. We worship you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, team. Thank you for leading us today. <coughs> you know, it's exciting to be here. I am rather tired, but I am rather excited for all that God is doing. If you don't know, um, last week we have we had Easter to start with. I was busy, and then we had our youth camp as well. Um, and it's great to be back from that. It's great. It was a great time and. You know, I'm excited for all that was, and you know, it's always an exciting time to see a whole group of young people just not 
not a care in the world, just so excited to worship God, to receive, to respond to Him, to give God everything they have. And you know, you're seeing people respond daily. Transformation is happening. People are committing their lives to Him. And it's an exciting time. And I'm excited. How, Daniel, was it awesome? How was it, Daniel? Good. What was the best part? Best part? Snack shake. <laughs> yeah, snack, the snack shake. Yeah, that was good too. But it was incredible to see what God is doing, and He's stirring something up. And for, yeah, like I said, for a lot of people, it's a starting point. And it kind of goes into the series that we're going into, and I may come back and reference it. But as, as, as we do, let's get excited and expectant for all that God is doing, all that He has. And let's get excited as we do continue the seri- series, It's Your Time to Shine. Father, we just pray into this time. We thank you for all that you are and all that you're doing. Father, we thank you that you are here with us and that you are for us. And we just pray in this time expectantly for more. We thank you, Father, that you are here with us. You are for us and you are leading us and drawing us closer to you. Father, we just pray more in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're continuing it in First Peter, which is a very timely series. As I, I, I was thinking about how, where things are at in this world and how things are, it's very timely. And <coughs> as we start, we're just going to get straight into it. As we start, uh, we're going straight into chapter 2. We had a few weeks off over Easter and with Arjit sharing, but we're going back into chapter 2. And if you remember three weeks ago, Pastor Hamish shared on the verses beforehand talking about being born again and for that reason getting rid of the things and he mentioned five things for us to get rid of um, and that all of us have in some way of our life and all I'll say is after that message the thing you should not do is go to an all whites football match like I did try not to have malice trying not to have bad words you just sit there silently watching the game uh, so don't go to a message, listen to a message like that before any kind of football game. Um, but there's one thing I learned, and um, yeah, I was quite quiet that day, that afternoon. But I think it was such a good challenge for us. And as, as we keep going, it says here, and I'll repeat it again, it says, Therefore, rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk. That so by it you may grow up in your salvation, that you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. You know, basically, Peter's writing, you know, because you've been born again, get rid of these things. This is not who you are. You know, this stuff isn't who you're called to be. Instead of that, instead of doing that, let's, you should crave pure spiritual milk. You know, it's a picture, pure spiritual milk, of, you know, a a baby and a mother. They're going straight to the source of life, straight, straight to the source of the beginning of life. This is what we should crave, pure spiritual milk. And if we're going to look at what pure spiritual milk is, another great way of saying it is going straight to the source or gaining what only God can give. Gaining what only God can give. You know, we're not just craving great things here on earth, but craving what only God can give us. What only God can do in our lives. That's what we should be craving. That's what Peter is telling. That's that's what you should crave. And in doing that, you will grow in your salvation. You will grow in what God has already started. You'll grow in your relationship with God. You'll grow in your faith. This is where you will grow. And this is how you'll grow in your salvation. And it all goes back. All because you have tasted that the Lord is good. You know, I love that about camp is a lot of young people, especially young people here, for the first time in their lives would have experienced and understood and seen that the Lord is good. It would have been a start of the, they would have seen who he is like never before. And, you know, for all of us, there's probably times or a time in our life or first time in our life where we first encountered God's love, where we tasted that the Lord is good. We experience. Tasting is a picture of experiencing. God in his nature, and that he is good. 
You know, Psalm 34 verse 8 says this. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Continuing, you know, taste, continue to taste and see, ex- constantly experience the goodness of God, that God is good. You know, it's interesting, this whole picture of craving pure spiritual milk. It's, it's what Jesus has talked about through the Gospels as well. We see it in John verse 4, 13 to 14. Jesus with the Samaritan when he's talking to her. And he says this, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. Those who drink the water I will give them will never be thirsty. Again, it becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Isn't this another good picture, very similar picture of of what God brings, of what God offers when we drink from, from what Jesus has given us? We will never be thirsty again. And it becomes a bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. You know, it's such a good picture of what God has started or started maybe for you 30, 40 years ago now. Maybe it's even a week or two weeks or a year or a few years, but God has started something. You've tasted and seen the Lord is good. You've experienced something that you've never experienced anywhere else. And it's the start of something beautiful. And for that reason, crave pure spiritual milk. Crave more of what only God can give. And as it continues in the scripture, it says this in verse 4. Jesus replied, oh, you are coming to Christ. So as you are coming to Christ, who was the living cornerstone, the living cornerstone of God's temple, he was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. Verse 5 says this. And you are a living stone. And it was mentioned today by Dale. You are a living stone that God is building into his spiritual temple. What more? You are his holy priests. Through the meditation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that plead, please God. As we can see what's being, being written here, what Peter's saying is, you are li- Jesus is the cornerstone. But you are living stones that, that God is building into his spiritual temple. We together, not just an individual, you are not being built into a temple. Together, we are being built into God's spiritual temple. He's building in us, but he's building in us together. As individuals and as a whole, we are being built into his spiritual temple. We are his holy priest. And that's not just talking to the priest at the time, he's talking to all of us. He's talking to the people he's writing to. And in response to that, response to who he is, response to craving pure spiritual milk, res- responding to what he is doing, growing in our salvation, you offer spiritual sacrifices that please God. We, we offer to God through our lives. We make sacrifices. We give to him. We offer all we have to him. Our lives are given to him in action that please God. You know, another, Paul writes about this as well in Romans 12 verse 1. He says this, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that will, he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. This is the, truly the way to worship him. This whole picture of giving spiritual sacrifice, giving sacrifice to him, giving, giving, us, giving him everything we have. And this is the way to worship. This is the way to please him. You know, I love... You know, as, as Peter wrote to the church and, and, and shared this with them, you know, it's so relevant then, but it's so relevant now because it tackles this whole idea of individualistic Christianity. 
that it's just me and Jesus. It's just me, Jesus has saved me. I've got my ticket to heaven. I'm going there. Awesome. That's great. I'll live my life here now. I'm going there. It's tackling that. It's showing it's not just this walk by yourself, but it's together you're being built. Together we're being built. It happens together. And together this is the way to worship Him. You know, it, it tackles that, and it's a great picture of what God is doing in all of us. You know, as, 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 as Peter continues, says this in verse 6, it says, for in Scripture it says, you know, Peter's referencing the Old Testament, he's referencing the Scripture, it says, I, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. He's reminding us in Scripture that when we put our trust in Him, he is, he is the cornerstone, that we will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe the stone is precious, to us who believe it means everything, but to those who do not believe the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. It says this next, and a stone that causes people to stumble. I think this is key. The cornerstone is a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. A stone that causes people to stumble. To us, to you, and may be precious but to others it makes them stumble. As we look at what P who Peter is writing to in the time of Nero, where being a Christian comes with so much persecution. <clears throat> Following Jesus comes with, you know, Nero lighting Christians on fire for entertainment. You know, being a Christian is not something that comes with perks in society. In society, you are hated. And Peter, you know, I know in the series we're going to talk more about suffering, but here, here Peter is drawing a distinct, dis, distinction between that this cornerstone that brings us hope is what also many stumble over because they disobey the message. And, you know, we can see this all through Scripture. And John, Jesus even preaches and talking to the crowd. He's fed 5,000. He's walked on water. And after walking on water, he preaches to the crowd. He's talking to them about being the bread of life. And he says, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread, which I will offer so the world may live in my flesh. And you know, the same picture, <coughs> whoever eats from me, that Jesus is talking about, Peter is talking about, Paul is talking about. And as Jesus preaches this, they're not like, all the crowd's not like, yeah, awesome. They grumble. They don't understand. They don't understand. And Jesus says it's only the, receive what the Father reveals to them. But as they go, the people get just really grumbled with all this. And it says this in the next verse. In John 6, verse 66, at this point, many of his disciples, it's not just many people in the crowd, but many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Then Jesus turned to the twelve and asked, are you also going to leave? Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. Stop and think about this for a moment. Here is Jesus' disciples, not his 12, but disciples, people who have given their lives and time to follow him at this point. And they're starting to desert him. This is a great parallel to what's happening in Peter's time. You know, people, to follow Jesus costs a lot. Persecution, hurt, pain. But on that still, he turns to them and Peter replies, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. Peter, 
at this point has experienced, he has tasted that the Lord is good. He has experienced that Jesus is the one who gives him everything he needs. He's experienced it. And so though no matter what comes, he's not just seeing disciples, Peter's not seeing just disciples leave, he's seeing his friends leave. He's seeing people he's walked with leave. He's seeing people he loves give up on Jesus. But still, his experience and what he has tasted is more than enough to keep him grounded. And he stands strong. And for that reason, as we continue, and as being reminded of you know, people falling, people <laughs> tripping, we've got to be reminded also that this persecution that they experienced, that Peter experienced, that Jesus saw with his even disciples, with his followers, you know, it was the same for us as well. I've, I was reminded this year is what it says in John 15 verse 20. It says this, remember what I told you, a servant is not greater than his masters. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obey my teaching, they will obey yours also. And then it even says this in Matthew 10 verse 22. You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. You know, so often we forget about this. You know, we hear these great things, taste and see, you know, taste that the Lord is good, experience it. But we've got to remember, as, as, as a time in Peter and Nero, there was persecution. It hurt. And, and we've got to see here as well, you will be hated by everyone because of me. The more that we taste, the more that we crave, the more that we want more of God, the more we will be hated by society, by this world, by the people around us. The more we grow, the more people won't like us. And you've got to realize this. Our goal, and as, it's tr- as Peter's trying to show here, that the hope is in everything. Our identity is in him, not in how the world sees us, not how people look at us. Because if we're taking Jesus' word at heart, there will be people that hate us. As we take Peter's word, people will trip over the cornerstone and it will cause them to fall. There's going to be between us and people. And I even said this to a few people, I said this, you know, even with friendships, you know, there's going to be people that we walk alongside who don't know Jesus yet and they're going to see the cornerstone and they're going to follow him. But there's also going to be people in our lives who don't know Jesus that will end up hating us. And people don't like to hear this, but if Jesus in our life, they could trip over him and end up hating us because of it. And sometimes there will be times where friendships won't last because Jesus is too strong in your lives. I even said this to people and challenged them with this, is pursuing relationships, a little off topic, but pursuing relationships. You know, with a non-Christian for marriage, I was reminded of this verse and it's challenged me ridiculously. This person, and I hear this all the time, but they may come to Jesus, absolutely, but but they could trip over the cornerstone and hate you because of Jesus. And that's your marriage. Why would you want that? We've got to realize that people may trip over the cornerstone. They may come to him and that, that's going to happen. But some may trip. And as we see it here, we will be hated. But as Peter then goes on, he reaffirms their identity. He reaffirms our identity by saying, but you are a chosen people. But you are not like that. You are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own position. This is who you are. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. You can continue to show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of the darkness and into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. You received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. You know, Peter is reminding the people all over the land, he's reminding us who we are. 
you know, despite persecution, despite what has happened, this is who you are. You are a chosen people. You are royal priests. You are a holy nation. God's very own possession. He's reminding you where your identity is, who you are above everything else. The focus is on the relationship with God rather than how any of the circumstances may be. And you know, this is really what Peter is saying. Because you have been born again, get rid of those things. Get rid of those things, deceit. Get rid of those things, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. Don't focus on that, but rather, rather than that, crave what only God can give. Crave what only God can give. Know who you are. You are a chosen people. Because no matter what comes against you, no matter if people give up on you, no matter if people hate you or reject you, they rejected Jesus first. Your identity is in Him and Him alone. So continue to crave what only God can give. Continue to seek Him. And, you know, we're going to look shortly of what that means by craving more of what only he can give. But that is what he's asking of the church. Crave more. You know, maybe a question for you is, what does craving more of God look like? You know, what does craving more of God, God, more of what only he can give, look like? You know, I was thinking about it. It's not just, you know, maybe I need one you know, more worship. Maybe I need to read more. I think it's craving everything he can give. Everything that God gives. And that includes, you know, it includes being discipled. It includes being challenged. It includes, um, you know, responding in prayer. You know, it responds in having quiet, you know, having time with just you and Him. It includes conviction. It includes being challenged. It includes repentance. It includes community. It includes so much. And not just taking one of the things we like. You know, I need to spend more time just in worship. And it's receiving God. I want to take everything you have to give me. And that may annoy me, they might challenge me, that might mean I have to change a few things in my life. That might mean I need to prioritize things a bit differently. I might need to make a few sacrifices and give a few sacrifices to you. Give up some things for your sake. But that's enough because I crave more of what you can give. I crave more of what only you can give. You know, it says this, James says this, in 1 verse 2 to 4. It says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Not lacking anything. You know, Take it great joy. I think this all comes together. Keep on going. Keep craving more. Keep craving more. You know, I really believe this is, you know, for us as a church, you know, looking at times as we are in at the moment, it is not popular to claim you love Jesus. But let's continue to crave more. You know, you have tasted, you have experienced that the Lord is good. Hold on to that and continue. I, I'm sorry, Hannah, can you go back to my earlier slide? There's a picture of me. I completely forgot it was here. There's a picture of me that should come up. I'll give her a little bit of time to find it. There's a picture of me. Look at that. No beard. Hopefully you can see him. No beard. Nice orange hair. This was, I think, 11 or 12 years ago now. I remember this is the day I had tasted and seen and experienced God quite a lot. I had, and I remember... And this is the day I decided to get baptized. And, you know, it's not the clearest picture, but, yeah, no, keep going, next one. And I remember this day, and I remember I jumped out of the water, and I screamed, it's all for you, God. 
I was ready to give it all because I'd tasted and seen and I knew that there would be challenges and I knew it would be difficult. But this is the day I decided. I'd given him my life, I'd given him everything, but this is the day I decided I'm, I, I'm just going to keep craving more. And no matter what challenge came, you know, no matter how time has gone, it's been a little while since then. You know, there's been a beard. You guys probably have never seen my face without a beard. But it's to continue it. Craving more. I remember going back of how life was before then. Until what God did, it was enough. I've tasted, I've seen. It's enough to keep going. To keep going. So can, let's continue to crave. So my question is, how can we respond as we wrap up? How can we respond to what God is doing? And my question and my, is, for, for all of us is let's go to where God is. I'm going to bring up some jugs to finish off with. Here's some jugs. Someone th- may have thought this was communion. It wouldn't have tasted very good. I was reminded last night as I was just praying, as try, trying to fall asleep, is so often, you know, lo- this is like time. This is our life. Here you go, imagine, you know, this can be Hamish. He was born into this world, and you're filled, life happened, you're getting older, and this is, world, this is just experience, and here you are in life, and then at some point, you experience God. This, take this picture of God's hand in your life. You've tasted and you've seen that God is good. You've experienced this, this, this moment in your life and a change for you. You've given Him everything. But so often in our lives, we look at it as, you know, I've, I've heard people go, you know, I'm, I'm not pursuing God at the moment, but it's not like, it's like a graph. It's not like I'm going down. I'm just staying where I am. But if we just stay where we are, you know, we don't pursue Him more. We don't go further. You know, life and experience will happen. And, and things, you know, got a job, got to focus on family, workplace, getting higher and higher in my life, got to, got to go further and deeper in my career, I've got to make more money, I need a second house, you know, I'm just focusing on everything I'm getting, now I've got grandkids, they're, they're the most important, um, you know, just keep going, you know, Jesus is still there, that hasn't left, it's not gone anywhere, but nothing's happened, you know, we keep going, getting older, older, you know, keep going, keep going, and comes to the end of our life. You know, God hasn't gone anywhere. He's still there. We still hold on to this precious time in our lives where God's hand is in our lives and we've been redeemed. We realize that. And, and there's, you know, it's good. It's still there. But if we look at it, life and experience just kept on rising. It's not at the top. The hand, his hand isn't at the top of priority in our life. It's just there. But if, if we take these words properly, you know, life start again, life happens, life happens, and then there's a decision, you know, and we surrender our lives, we've tasted and seen the Lord is good, but we, we continue to crave more of who He is. We continue to give more and more. We seek Him. We have challenges. The will comes against us, you know, people, but we're still going. You know, our, our God's hand is with us. He's going with us, and more, oh, there's water flying out of the, and it keeps going, but His whole his whole hand is on us. You know, it's covering it. I'm sure I had bit bigger hands to show you this, but, you know, when, when, when it's seen, they're not just seeing a jug with a dent, but they are seeing a jug with God standing completely in front of it, covering it. And for us, I, I was reminded, I think this is a great picture. We think that staying here, you know, I've made a decision, I've done something. And some of us have been going for a long time and get to the point where we stop around here. I, I'm older now. I'm older. But there's still more. Keep craving more. Keep pursuit. Keep pursuit until our last breath. I think there's a response and a challenge for us in that. What does that look like in our lives? 
to continually craving more of what he can, what he has. Because when we continually crave more, he will give us peace, he will give us joy, he will give us everything we need. And so none of that matters, none of the experience. He will give us everything we need. So as we wrap up today, as we finish today, I want to challenge you with that. You may have tasted and seen and kind of just got overcome by the challenges and the people not liking you out there to the point where you just ignore this part when you're around, the faith part when you're around them. Or is it time just to continually crave more of what only God can give? Be open, have your hands open, ready for what only He can give. What's one new thing you can do to pursue God more in your life? Let's be challenged, let's run to Him. Because I don't think it's going to get easier out there, but we can find everything we need in Him. Father, I just thank you for today. Father, I thank you for the series and how timely it is in our lives. I pray in this time, you have given us everything. We have experienced, we may experience, or we may experience now that you are good. And God, I pray together, build us into, into your spiritual temple, God. Build us. Help us to grow in our salvation. And Father, we want to pursue you and give you everything. We want to make spiritual sacrifice in our life. We want to be challenged and give all that we have. You are worth it all. So Father, together, help us to crave, be a people that crave what only you can give. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lewis, for that amazing word. It is so awesome uh, to hear your perspective and um, hear how God has spoken to you through today's word. If you do have any questions, a reminder that you can ask them at www.slido.com using the hashtag ALC23. Uh, it can be from Lewis's word today or any other sermons or, or like I said before, any life or faith-based questions. And we'll make sure that they get answered. But until next Sunday, God bless and we'll see you again.